Hi guys. Okay, so today um, Meghan Markle had her baby and had the baby at home in a home birth using hypnobirthing as far as we know. So if you don't know, I used to be a hypnobirthing instructor. I taught hypnobirthing for almost eight years. I taught over 300 couples and had two successful hypnobirths of my own. So when I read that there was a convention of the American College of Obstetrician Gynecologists and a doctor named Dr. Timothy Draycott made a comment of um, making fun of her for wanting a home birth and saying Meghan Markle's decided she's going to have a doula and a willow tree. Let's see how that goes. That stuff pisses me off so much. First of all, doctors don't know everything. A lot of them think that they do just because they went to medical school. However, they only know what they know. They only know what they're taught. They only know what they've experienced in medical school. And I've had doctors go through my hypnobirthing classes. I've had nurses go through my hypnobirthing classes and I would make a point of asking them, have you ever seen a natural birth on purpose? And they would all say no. They might have seen a natural birth on accident where someone got there so, and their birth was progressing so quickly they couldn't get med meds, they couldn't do an epidural, whatever. Um, I've had EMTs see the same thing. But they've never seen a natural birth on purpose, one that was planned for, one where the couple went in empowered and educated with techniques to help the mom relax, to help the mom not be freaked out. Um, the main thing with hypnobirthing, if you don't know what it is, is it's all about retraining the brain. We as women see birth on TV and the movies, read about it, hear stories, they're all negative, right? In the movies, the women are screaming bloody murder, yelling things at their partner. Um, the stories that we hear typically are like the horror stories of like, oh my God, I was in labor for, you know, a day and a half and I tore and like everything's all messed up and da 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 da, all of that, right? And so we think that that's normal, but birth the way that we have it in the US isn't working, folks. It's time to wake up birth the way that we see it in the US in the hospital, in the medicalized system, is not working. And the statistics show this. So if you go online and search for the infant mortality rate and the maternal mortality rate in the US compared to all of the other countries in the world, we should be number one because we have tons of money invested in our hospitals and all of the latest technology, right? As soon as mom gets into the hospital, she's on a monitor, her blood pressure is being checked, all the heartbeats being taken care of, all of the things are being taken care of. If you look on to find out what the infant and mor maternal mortality rates, we're like low. We should be like at least in the top three, if not the top but we are 27th in the world as of 2017 for infant mortality. That means more, there's 26 other countries in the world that have a better outcome for a newborn than in the United States. And some of those countries are Cuba and um, small countries that don't have a lot of money. Hungary, Poland have better outcomes than the US. That's crazy. Don't you think? And why Why is that? Hmm. Maybe because as soon as you get into the hospital, you're put on a monitor and you're laying on your back with all the weight of your baby on your spine and on all those important arteries and on possibly the placenta and the umbilical cord and you're not really moving around. And hmm. maybe when you're about to go and push, you're laying flat on your back where you have to then push 
down and up against gravity and oh maybe when the doctor's ready then you're ready to push huh and then when the doctor's ready the doctor's telling you push as hard as you can and then you're tearing hmm okay and maybe the fact that birth is the biggest money-making industry for all hospitals might be an aha moment for you as well. And that C-section rates go up on the week, but right before the weekend, they go down during the weekend. They go really spike up right before a holiday or a three-day weekend. They go up right before dinner and they go up again right before bedtime. And then they go down in the middle of the night. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Because doctors want to be convenient they want convenient times for their births because, oh, they don't get paid their whole full amount of money if they aren't present for their birth. If the nurse delivers the baby because the doctor's not there, they don't get the big chunk of money. Hmm. That's effed up, folks. So when you have anyone pregnant that you know, please have them watch. The Business of Being Born. It's a documentary by Ricky Lake and Abby Epstein. Um, it's mind expanding as to the money making industry of birth. And it's time for women and their partners to take control back of their birthing experiences and of their bodies. Now, I'm not saying like everybody go have a home birth and absolutely never do a birth in a hospital. I'm not saying that, okay? So, I had both of my babies in a hospital with a doula. And without the doula, I would have caved. I would have had an epidural probably during my first one. Um, but thankfully, I had taken a hypnobirthing class that re-taught me how to think about birth, was able to teach me deep relaxation techniques so that I could relax so that my muscles weren't tense so that I wasn't having the fight or flight response going through my whole entire body so that my uterus and my baby were getting the blood and the oxygen that they needed so that my birth could be more comfortable instead of me tensing up and holding my breath and being scared and having the fight or flight response released in my body and all my muscles tightening up and more blood and oxygen going to my heart and my lungs versus my uterus and my baby. Okay, so hypnobirthing and learning and reteaching my brain about what birth is all about and doing hypnosis sessions to get rid of the fear, learning how to ask questions so that I knew, or my partner Scott knew, and my doula was there so that we could give ourselves time instead of thinking every decision was a panic decision and making decisions out of fear rather based on educated decisions, good judgment. Um, and so I encourage everybody that if you've got an OBGYN that's telling you like, Meh, yeah, let's just see how that goes. like. Rethink that. You have a choice. You can change doctors. I've had people change doctors up until the last week, 39 weeks I've had people change doctors. Great doctors are few and far between, but there are doctors out there if you want a hospital birth. There's also birth centers that have midwives and doctors. There's birth centers that are linked to hospitals that you can also go to if home birth isn't your thing. Just know that there are choices and just know that if your doctor's kind of just like, meh, you know, like want, trying to just like push you through the assembly line of birth, like that's not the kind of birth experience that you want. You want your birth experience to be a beautiful, empowering one, not a medicalized one, not one where you just feel like you're laying on the table and things are happening to you. This is important for you and your baby to have a birth experience where fear is not a part of anything. It's not running through your blood, it's not running through your baby's blood. And that you can leave your birth knowing that you had a wonderful birth experience, a positive birth experience, because it is possible. So rant over, thanks for joining me. Here's to the 100 days of me sharing my thoughts. Hope you found that helpful.